Removal of a loose polyethylene glenoid component with subsequent bone grafting has traditionally been done through an open approach. Here we describe a technique for an all arthroscopic approach in a previous high demand athlete with profound glenoid osteolysis. After positioning in the lateral decubitus position, standard arthroscopic portals are utilized. All scar tissue encountered in the joint and along the margins of the implant should be debrided to expose the entirety of the glenoid. An arthroscopic probe or liberator can be used to assess the glenoid fixation with subsequent removal occurring in either a piecemeal fashion with an arthroscopic biter or burr or also through the use of transverse cuts with an osteotome. Familiarity with accessory portals can aid with component mobilization and removal. Use of a low posterior accessory portal here aided with appreciation for failure at the bone cement interface and subsequent loosening. An osteotome can then be used to remove the pegs or keel of the component to aid with extraction through the soft tissues. Extraction occurs through an extension of the anterior portal, taking care to avoid damaging the subscapularis tendon. To aid with fluid management, extension of the portal should occur just prior to component extraction. All loose particles and cement should then be removed to expose the remaining glenoid defect. After component explantation, this patient was noted to have a large cavitary defect and subsequent planned bone grafting was then performed. Placement of the bone graft can occur through two different methods. Smaller bone particles or paste can be packed into an arthroscopic cannula with the cannula functioning as a delivery vehicle to inject the bone graft directly into position. Additionally, cortical cancellous bone chips can be inserted through a cannula and impacted into place with a bone tamp. Reducing or completely stopping arthroscopic flow during the bone grafting portion of the procedure can aid with visualization and help to decrease a snowstorm effect from the loose bone graft material. Utilization of an acellular dermal allograft patch to aid with bone graft containment begins with placement of suture anchors at the 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock positions. Simple sutures are passed externally in the anterior and posterior inferior corners of the graft. With the aid of a non-penetrating clamp, the extended anterior portal is utilized to pass the graft into the joint. Sutures are then tied in a simple fashion. Superiorly, anchors are placed at 1 and 11 o'clock and an arthroscopic suture passer is used to pass the corresponding sutures through the graft. Care should be taken when measuring the anterior, posterior, and superior inferior measurements of the graft to ensure proper graft tension, and if desired, additional anchors can be placed at the 3 and 9 o'clock positions. Because this technique avoids takedown of the subscapularis, early passive range of motion is allowed in all planes following this procedure. Early active range of motion and strengthening, however, should be avoided to aid with graft incorporation.